Welcome to a webinar hosted by the National Diabetes Prevention Program, or National DPP, on using hemoglobin A1C or A1C to meet program requirements for both participants and organizations. Agenda. This webinar serves as an overview on the use of A1C values within the National DPP. As part of today's webinar, we will introduce the two main uses of A1C within the program. Number one, how to use A1C to determine Lifestyle Change Program, or LCP, eligibility. And number two, how to use A1C as an optional outcome measure, including walking through data reporting requirements. We'll then take you through a demonstration on how to report A1C values to CDC. Uses of A1C values. Organizations recognized by CDC to deliver the National DPP LCP can use A1C values in two ways, to determine participant eligibility and to measure risk reduction using this optional outcome. A1C is one way to determine if an adult 18 or over is at risk of developing type 2 diabetes and if that adult is eligible to participate in the National DPP. We will go into specific requirements later in the webinar. In addition to eligibility, A1C is used as an optional reporting measure by program delivery organizations to show a reduced risk of type 2 diabetes. A1C for LCP eligibility. We will now go into the specifics of using A1C to determine participant eligibility. Participants in the National DPP LCP must meet several requirements to be eligible for the program. All program participants must be 18 years of age or older, have a body mass index, BMI, of greater than or equal to 25, greater than or equal to 23 if an Asian American person, and not be pregnant. Participants must then meet one of the three eligibility requirements, either a positive screening for prediabetes, a previous diagnosis of gestational diabetes, or elevated blood glucose in the prediabetes range based on the results of one of three blood tests. These tests include a fasting plasma glucose test, an oral glucose tolerance test, or an A1C test. For today, we are only going to look at A1C levels, but please see the Diabetes Prevention Recognition Program, DPRP, standards for a full list of eligibility requirements. If a person has an A1C level in the 5.7% to 6.4% range, they have prediabetes and can participate in the National DPP LCP. Note that this test needs to be done within one year before participant enrollment in the program. If the participant is enrolled in the Medicare Diabetes Prevention Program, MDPP, the blood test result cannot be self-reported. A1C as an outcome measure. The eligibility determination is distinct and separate from using A1C as an optional outcome measure for recognition status determination. To achieve and maintain recognition status, CDC recognized organizations must meet several requirements, including showing that there has been a reduction in the risk of developing type two diabetes among people completing the national DPP. Organizations must show that 60% of all persons completing the LCP achieved one of three outcomes after the cohort began, at least a 2% reduction in A1C, a minimum of 5% weight loss 12 months after the participant cohort began, or at least 4% weight loss combined with at least 150 minutes a week on average of physical activity. All three of these measures show reduced risk of type 2 diabetes among participants. Specific reporting requirements for CDC recognized organizations. There are several specific data reporting requirements for organizations if they are using A1C as an outcome measure. First, a pre and post intervention A1C value must be collected. These values can be self-reported except for MDPP participants. Please visit the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, MDPP website at cmsorg.force.com forward slash MDPP for more information on MDPP requirements. 
If no beginning or ending value is recorded, organizations should use a 999 as a default value and not use A1C for this participant. If choosing to include this information, the pre-intervention or baseline A1C measure must result from a test taken within a year before entering the program and be reported within 14 days after the first session attended by the participant. Baseline entries must be in the prediabetes range of 5.7% to 6.4%. The ending or post-intervention value should be collected and reported before the final data submission for each year of the program. Post-intervention A1C measures must be recorded in months 9 through 12 to be used for evaluation. To determine the date of your last session, Organizations can use the Understanding and Managing Sequences resource and webinar on the National DPP Customer Service Center CSC website. Once final data are submitted, CDC will determine if participants met the 0.2% A1C reduction. One final note. A1C can only be used with data submissions under the 2021 DPRP standards going forward. CDC will not allow the retroactive addition of A1C values on previous data submissions under previous versions of the DPRP standards. A1C reporting demonstration. Organizations upload and submit data to CDC using the DPRP data submission and administration portal. A data entry spreadsheet template in CSV format is available on the CSC to help with the submission. The top row of the template contains the required variables as column headings. The column labeled A1C is where you will enter the collected A1C values. To prevent errors from creating a flag in your data reporting file, the pre-intervention entry should be in the range of 2.5 to 18 or 999 if the value is not reported. Note that only an A1C of 5.7% to 6.4% can be used to qualify for the program. Even if your organization is not reporting a pre-intervention value for a participant, keep in mind that cells in the spreadsheet cannot be left blank. The post-intervention value should be associated with the session held in months 9 through 12 of the participant's timeline and can be either within or below the prediabetes range. Any entries above the prediabetes range will be flagged, and a member of the data team will contact you because the participant is no longer eligible for the program. Records for sessions held in between the reporting of the pre- and post-intervention values should have the default value of 999 entered. Entering valid A1C values for these sessions, however, will not flag an error. They simply won't be used. If multiple values are entered for records associated with months 9 through 12, the lowest value will be used for the reduction calculation. Thank you. In summary, A1C can be used in two different ways. One, to determine participant eligibility in the national DPP LCP, and two, as an outcome measure for organizations to show their program is leading to a reduction in participants' risk for type 2 diabetes. For more information on using A1C, please review the DPRP standards found on the CSC website at nationaldppcsc.cdc.gov. If you have further questions, please reach out to a CDC representative by visiting the CSC and submitting a technical assistance request. To submit a request, you will need to complete a brief profile by selecting Login and then Register. Once logged in, select Technical Support Request on the homepage. Thank you for your time and for participating in the National DPP.